Welcome to Keith and the Girl. I'm Keith Malley. I'm Hemda. Hemda, we were just on the Black Guy Who Tips podcast. That's right. They were live. Mm -hmm. Some of you guys caught it. Thanks for being there. Rod and Karen are joined by Keith and Hemda, they say. Uh, download the episode 2566. You love to see it. Again, the oh. Black Guy Who Tips. A lot of fun. Yay, we got to be titled You Love to See It. That's a great title. I do also, love to see it. Thank you. And they're fantastic, of course. They're also the host of our VIP show last week on Keith and the Girl, where they sum up the week before. Also in your VIP package, a brand new Diamond Dogs. Woot woot. Life, Love, War, the Universe, and Nathan Fielder. Keith and Craig are ready for you, and these dogs are off the chain. You'll find it right under VIP. Also, if you have the app, keithandthegirl.com slash app. It's our free app. You can go under Diamond Dogs and look at the pictures there because I'm about to talk about them in a second. First off, let me introduce to you today's guest from the podcast, Shut Up, Mommy's Talking, Kyle Ocasio. Hi. Thank you guys for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. There was no uh, hassle. I wasn't nervous <laughs> about uh, anybody being late or anything uh, or anything like that. She's the she goes, Keith, oh, are so you trying to share something? <laughs> How about the late people? You know, just be late. Let me figure it out. Don't say you'll be here. Not at three at three or five and then say, how's Kyle, are you getting everybody in trouble? The late people? I guess <laughs> I literally was going to come early and cut his hair and just be, you know, he gets very anxious if someone's not on time. And I overestimated how much time I had because I trained someone and then my butt was sore from a class I took the other day. And I thought I have enough time to get a, like a quick massage because I was in a lot of pain. I knocked out, fell asleep. The owner had to come in and say, Miss. And I was like, oh, hi, sorry. I was drooling. I was really knocked out. They had to a wake me up. regular masseuse couldn't wake you up. They had to get the owner. Yes, the owner came in. And apparently, me. because you had your time scheduled just so, they kept massaging even longer during the sleep <laughs> and ripped you off because that's the only way time would change. Well, they, I think someone said, like, if I wanted 15 more minutes, and I was like, yeah, sure. I remember vaguely hearing that. But then uh, I guess they tried a couple times to wake me up, and I was so tired. So Because we don't all get to nap like Keith Malley every day, you know? I like how they turn it around. I know you get anxious <laughs> when people are late. Yes, I do get anxious when people on my team, let's say, are late, and I have to explain that. And you know what? It's easier. It gets easier to explain it to him because now I say to him, I'm like, we'll be late. <laughs> in fact you invited her on the show in fact this is your fault Hemda. we'll be late well i'm here and i'm so happy i'm here so yes yay now if you look at these uh pictures under this uh, vip show you'll see that i'm trying to get like a passport looking picture for my passport renewal and for my va card and you can send that in through the computer you just have to take it against the white background I start crying when I take pictures of myself. <laughs> I hate it. I hate the way it looks. I don't want it on an ID forever. And so I, uh, I said, you know what? I'm going to take the image from the great American novel cover. And I asked Craig. When hey, you were like 20? I, yeah, who cares? So I asked Craig. It's the only picture I like ever <laughs> that I've ever taken. And Shout I out say, to Matt Bray. Yeah, he did great. And I say, hey, Craig, do you know how to Photoshop? You know art. And can you just make the background white? And he said, yes. Now, if you look at this picture, I don't Does think it this look like you're going to jail. Let's see. Let's look. Uh, oh, Minimum security prison. <laughs> it does look like a headshot, which is good. But uh, huh. I, I mean, know. it's not current. It's, you know, I've I've worked with comedians when I see our pictures on the whatever show and it's like that headshot is from 1999. You think the VA <laughs> won't let me into war again? <laughs> you know, who cares? I wonder if if uh, in some of the click here, well, if you agree to this and click here, if you agree to this, click here it, it to say that this photo has not been photoshopped in any way or altered or blah, blah, blah in any universe and whatever. I wonder if that's there. 
I would then I'll, be then concerned. Then I'll just say, then I sent the wrong picture in, and I'll send a regular picture in. Oh, right. You're some white dude. I don't care. What's the matter? <laughs> but anyway, it's funny to me, but his Photoshop skills, they're ste it's those steps are going around my head. Do you know what I mean? Oh, 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 you're criticizing Craig's Photoshop. Let me yeah. see it again. Come on. Well, I don't know if you'll be able to tell through the camera. No, but... I won't. But what a, but what you a see, terrible like the... friend. Craig, yes, fucking Poor I Craig, hope you didn't, do didn't, go to jail. You went off on Craig like a couple episodes ago. This is off, worse than jail for keys. <laughs> I went off on Craig because he blamed it on me. Like, there's no way they'll accept this because it's a picture. It's an illustration as opposed to a picture because uh, somebody drew dirt on me because on the cover I'm digging holes. So I have dirt on me. I'm like, don't worry about that. I don't care. That It's fine. But he couldn't do good Photoshop work because it's an illustration. No, you either know Photoshop or you don't, and you don't know it. Same way he doesn't like, really like space. Oh, oh, it, what a full circle. So I didn't somehow know it became my back. fault that, that he didn't deep. know Photoshop. That's, that's the part that bothered me. No, it's his fault. Yes, it is yes. his fault. He did you a favor. You know how I get anxious at this stuff. <laughs> oh, my God. This is, is this a favor? Yes. Well, teach me a lesson, Craig. No more favors. Oh, God. Oh, Craig, I'm sorry. He's I sabotaging tried. me, trying to get my card over here. <laughs> He's taking his own time to do stuff for you. This took no time. Don't tell me this took time. <laughs> this did not take time. It's, it's, it's impossible that that took time. <laughs> I, see, I, I could have done that, but I wanted it to look good. He acted like he knew how to do it. You know what didn't. this is? You know how what? like there's the sound of silence? This yep. is the sound of somebody trying to help Keith. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Keith. This is what does the word let me, <laughs> let me look up the word trying. Oh god. Don't oh. look up the word. Are you really go he's really trying. Googling this. <laughs> he's really doing this. No, trying I mean he definition. should be accurate. Yeah. Def trying oh, some if something's trying, it's hard to endure. That's that's Craig. Mm. Oh, <laughs> Extremely annoying. Trying difficult. my patience is an example. Yeah, so this is trying. That's exactly, you know what? That is the right word. He definitely was trying. And he did. And he did. No, I hate, I hate taking pictures so much. I'm going to ask Kyle to do it later. And Oh, great. You, I can't wait. You can't show me one at a time. You got to take 30 pictures, hand me the phone, and your job is done. And, and he I gets, use he them gets or don't. mad. Like I was, yes. one time I was taking pictures of him and he's just, just stop. Just stop. I'm like, yeah. what, what happened? I'm not mad at you. I'm frustrated about the whole fucking thing. Why is it so hard to take a decent picture? And, and you've, you've heard about those people that they, they're getting face work done because they look at the selfie part on their phone and they look disgusted. Well, that's all I could see if I take it by myself, so I'm going to cry. You're okay. Fine. Kyle, are you ready for him to cry? I guess. You're but I won't it. cry because she'll take 30 pictures, give it to me. <laughs> she'll leave. No one will know nothing. I'll see the 30 pictures by myself without anybody judging them. And if I don't like them, I go, well, no shit. And that'll be the end of it. That's how I'll be okay. But she can't show me one picture at a time or I'd go nuts. Do you okay. have a better help, Ed? Maybe now's a good transition. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm calling him tonight. Better help is online therapy. And I do use it. Use it more. I'm getting better and better, believe it or not. Do seven sessions a day. <laughs> uh, listeners get 10% off your first month. BetterHelp, H-E-L-P. BetterHelp.com slash K-T-G. It's online therapy. They offer video, phone. Maybe you don't like your fucking head. Oh, he's head. not going to do video. He if, won't do video. If you, don't, if you don't like your head, just do chat only. That's okay. A Photoshop for his therapist. They get I'll it. put a picture of Brad Pitt and be like, let's just talk. This is me. I have some problems. Like, how do you have any problems? <laughs> oh, well, that's that's the hell I'm going through. You know? Oh, boy. It's a tough life. Yeah. Babe. We talked about uh, space with uh, Craig. You know, I'm. I'm trying to get him to admit he doesn't love it as these uh, telescope pictures as much as he's acting about acting like a new um, a how, new picture. How long is this game? Like, it feels like it's longer than Monopoly until he I admits think... that it's bullshit. Oh, OK. But but like you're both enjoying this, right? We're not getting it wrong. Like we shouldn't be calling anybody. It's hard to tell. But okay. anyway, a new picture came out. Uh, you, you, I'll put it on the website. But if you see this dot, you're seeing it in black and white right now. But picture it's red. That is officially the oldest galaxy at 300 million years old. 
Wow, that puts things into perspective. I guess it's interesting. I don't know. Mary! Oh. <laughs> it's not interesting. <laughs> Stupid. But if, it, if it's not interesting to you, yeah. could it be but, interesting to other? Oh, just not to Craig. Craig it's not interesting it's not to Craig. Interesting He's to never talked about space in his life. I don't think it's interesting to these people. Look what happens when he people. talks about space. <laughs> I was he just going to talk say. about space around you. You think he tried before? And I, he goes, you know about space? And I go, shut the fuck up. You, uh, we have documentation of you yelling into your mic. Space is stupid. NASA is stupid. Going to the moon is stupid. Why we waste? Why not do something with cheese? I don't know. <laughs> Going to the moon is good. Do you think that the moon landing was real? The moon landing was real. Okay. It's good. Kyle was checking to see, like, who am I? Okay. Is he a flat earther? I don't know. I never (laughs) had these conversations. You got to have them now, right? It's scary. It shows that we're the best. Oh, that. Okay. (laughs) Great. (laughs) You're still standing by that, 2022. Now Now let's go to Venus. No, but here's pictures of something that doesn't even exist, quite frankly. Oh. Maybe, maybe that's the start. Maybe that's there one minute at a time, the picture. And then you put it on your fridge and you go, we'll be there. You're going to expand OMAD into space. That's how right. about like, you point the telescope at Earth somewhere. and we see a dinosaur? That's something. Magic. Oh, Keith, what, can you turn on the magic? Oh, uh, well, you can't Science. do that. That's see, and that's these people. Oh, that's, that's these geez. people. Oh, now. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, was that, oh, Keith, really? Magic to see a dinosaur? Uh, now, 300 billion years in the past, that makes sense that we can see. But a dinosaur, Keith, really? It's a magic telescope now? Or is it just the most awesome telescope ever? You all right? I'm having a time. Just trying to take another picture it's today. It's really hot out today, everyone. It's, it's very hot out today. Yeah. It's very hot out today, and we can't go to the beaches because the sharks are everywhere. <laughs> They closed like a whole bunch of uh, Rockaway Beach has a whole bunch of uh, beaches there. They're all they're all closed now. I know I sent my my son went to the beach today and I just told him to wear a lot of sunblock, but I didn't tell him don't get eaten so that the sharks slip off. <laughs> but if, <laughs> the idea. but if you're at the Rockaway Peninsula, those are all closed. Uh, That's scary. So for those who don't know, like Rockaway is one of the beaches that we can go to by train. So it's very popular. The, another one is Coney Island and there's uh, Brighton Beach. But all along that side, there's a there's a train like a block away, which is that's magic. Take out your telescope. That's incredible. You're taking the train. It's a beautiful sight. And then all of a sudden, you know, from a hustle and bustle, one block away, you're in the beach. Amazing. Now there's sharks. Seven miles of oceanfront property are shut down to the public. Mm. Seven miles because of these sharks. The water's also, off. That's in, in, a, in a big way. That's the only thing New York City people have. You know, like right. we can get on a train and go to the beach and that's free. And, and then they're saying because of global warming and warmer waters. Um, I was reading a story that a lifeguard was playing victim in a training exercise at the beach. And uh, a shark started grabbing at the guy. So he's training, pretending he's drowning so people will save him. But he is really getting eaten by a shark. And like, well, this guy is really a fucking actor. For 15 bucks an hour. That's, <laughs> no. that's and then they dedication. Go to, and then they go to say somebody goes to save him knowing it's fake. So they're t- they're not, you know, on guard. Then they start getting eaten. And then everybody's like, we're only supposed to have one victim at a time, guys. What is this? Wait, next, did he really get eaten? Next thing you know, it's 17 people are drowning and, <laughs> and they, they have to no, call an 18th lifeguard. That. I'm exaggerating how many people are drowning. But yes, the, the, the one guy really got to grab by the leg. But he's OK now? Or? Yeah, he's doing great. Couldn't be happier. <laughs> <laughs> just, just wanted to do a quick shout out. Happy birthday. Uh, let's see. Let me go through my list. But oh. he took a chomp of his right foot, it says. He took a chomp? Oh, he took a says- chomp. He... Damn. Wow. And this it's probably a young like a teenager because those are the people that lifeguard throughout the summer. Let me tell you something. okay? if Keith was doing this thing where he had to pretend to drown. Right. And then all of a sudden he was like, holy shit. No, seriously, I am drowning. I'd be like. Wow, Keith is faking this so bad. He drowns Keith, all the time. That's not how you drown. You drown quietly. Let's not over exaggerate anything. And that's how you would die of a shark. Because because when you actually drive, you're like <clears throat> a part of 
party me. I don't want to take away from the. I'll just be. I'll just go fuck myself. Okay, but I don't want to bother people <laughs> with your death. That's all. Um, I'm reading here. Let me know what you think. Uh, okay. Cow's a parent. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. On a typical <laughs> Saturday or Sunday at Pig Beach, a beer garden with locations in Gowanus and Astoria, families, meaning with children, come early. They line up at 11.15 or 11.30 so that when the bar opens at noon, they can snag prime tables. Thirsty moms and dads quickly order some brewskis for themselves, hot dogs and Rice crispy treats for the kids. The kids mess around with cornhole games and colorful chalk. Well, the bar provides uh, the wary parents uh, with getting slam basted. We call them the <laughs> stroller patrol. And to be clear, it's open to everybody else too. You don't have to have a kid. Is is this fucking insane? Or hey, no. everybody needs a break. I remember they used to have when Robert was a baby. They had movies that you could come at like ten o'clock in the morning with your baby, and the whole theater was just all moms with babies, so that you could watch a movie. Right. Um, and it was understood that, you know, sometimes you'd have to get interrupted because someone would be walking by if the baby was screaming or something. That was nice because it catered to everybody in the same situation. Um, this right. doesn't seem like such a big deal. I mean, I don't see how the two are related, though. No, because it's a place just for they're giving that time a lot of just no. to parents. No, with babies. A regular person can get will be there in the there also. I went right. to one of these places. I went. We we went oh, yeah? recently. Yeah, yeah. Um, if if this is what you're talking about, we uh we fell in love with mojitos. And um, Xerxes looked it up. And a place in Brooklyn had these machines that had these frozen mojitos, absolutely delicious. And they had frozen other things. Very simple bar, just like maybe a couple of frozen things, and that's it. You do a quick survey around. And there's like a big outside and there's a food truck that's permanently there and picnic tables and whatever. And it's like, oh, that person's with a kid. Oh, shit, that person's with a kid. Oh, there's a lot of kids around. Then you look around a little more and it's like, wait, there's a little game for kids there. Oh, there's a, there's a thing that you could put a quarter. This is meant for parents to booze up while their kids are there. And right. at first I was like, this feels really strange. And then I remember like I've, I have brothers with kids. It's not like they can't have a beer and still keep an eye on their kids. Even two of them when they're, you know, other half is not there, you know, even multiple. And I think it's nice that um, like think about a, a family picnic. People are drinking. Their kids are around or uh, like life in general. You have your kid and you're still drinking. You don't have to drink excessively drive those kids home crash the car like that people not, in the you know, bar are drinking excessively they just are yeah and but it's also during the your... day right i mean i could see having an issue with it if it was like at night and there's single people trying to get laid and get smashed like yeah you don't want to see a baby oh but this was the, daytime in the day yeah. in the day i don't think it's a big deal i think the problem people go during the day maybe but i don't think it's a big deal I don't I, I wouldn't and have a problem with it if I saw a baby and it was 12 o'clock and I was having a mojito. I, I wouldn't care. I think, I think it might have... be weirder at night. Like if you're meeting a bunch of friends and it's, you know, 10 o'clock at night and you just want to whatever, just be adults, then, yeah, maybe. But then again, it's like it's not. You know, you go to bar anyway. mitzvahs, you go to quinceaneras, you go to weddings. Parents are drinking. They're having a good time. Kids know that that's what parents do. You don't go excessive. These, there's a lot of people that can just drink a regular amount, have their boozy night, prepare for whatever, and you know maybe somebody else is. Were on everybody the alert. in top hats and dresses when you went? <laughs> who are these? A, who are these people? <laughs> it was Brooklynites. It was you know we have a family, but we still like to hang out with each other. I, yeah. Why do you think it's a? You have an issue with it? I think it's insane. But that's because you don't know how to casually drink, if I may be so bold and sure. say that that is different. And He's not like, where would I shit in a drawer? <laughs> <Who would I? laughs> There's kids around. Right. Most not people it. don't do that insane type of stuff. So I, I think it's not. I, I think we're thing. acting like, just to be clear, I think we're acting like, why can't a gentleman have a mojito? Because we and are. be on his way. And, yes. Well, I don't. I think these people are having multiple beverages. I think you can either handle it. You, you got your prime enough. table. You came in half hour early to get your prime table and just just a couple sips for me. Now you're making it an adventure. It's free babysitting, kind of. 
You know what's interesting about this? And uh, as a mom, I'm probably on the side you wouldn't think I'd be on in terms of people with their double strollers in Manhattan taking up the whole side of the street. I once was that mom with the double stroller and I was coming out of a store and I held the door for this woman with the stroller and she just like, she saw me, she didn't even say thank you. And I'm like, fuck you. You know, like this is, I feel like sometimes people with kids feel like, oh, I have a baby. It's so hard. I have a baby. Yeah. Lots of people have had babies. Like it doesn't mean that the world is supposed to roll out the red carpet for you. And I'm clearly surprised at myself for saying that (laughs) because I have had multiple kids at small ages and it's really hard. Um, but I just thought it was really annoying when she didn't say thank you. So, so I, I smacked the shit out of her, but, um, no, big no, I mean, you know, you can't miss a thank you card. That would be rude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've said it once. I'll say it again. Says this person, Mike, I don't hang out in their playgrounds and I don't want them in my bars. Mike needs another drink. <laughs> there are so many bars. <laughs> And like, it's go okay. later on, Mike, you fucking alcoholic. Go a little bit later. Parents, if you think you're cool because you can bring your kids to a brewery or brew pub, you're not. <laughs> Why stop there? How about a casino? How about a strip club? I mean, come on, Mike. That's a bit dramatic. Let's see. Uh, this place in Williamsburg was the bar was strictly uh, 21 and older for years. But in 2018, it started allowing children during daylight hours after customers demanded it. Well, if they demanded it. You know what? This is hilarious, because if we were at brunch and there was a baby or some children, people would be like, what a lovely family. They brought all the kids to the nice meal. But you're bruising it up just as much as you could booze it up in other places. You know, I know that people think like Hamda doesn't like kids and she doesn't want them in any spaces. They are in spaces and they're fine. They don't make as much noise as people say that they do. They're doing the thing that they're doing and their families are around. If you saw a picnic, no one's drinking. There's a bunch of adults and a bunch of children that need to be taken care of. Trust that parents are either going to neglect or watch their kids like usual. And there are a lot of scenarios it would and make what me that so, looks like. It would make me nervous looking over and seeing a guy's holding a baby with one hand and a bear with another. It doesn't feel safe not, to it's me. It's not your kid. What are you, ACS? It's not your kid. Uh, someone's got to watch what's going on. It They'll takes a fine. village. It's not like you can have know, they're not in beer. a shooting out gallery with shooting up heroin with kids. Like it's not. I, I, I know I'm an alcoholic, but these people aren't having one beer. They went out of their way. It's time to relax. They had an adventure. Booze was considered essential during the pandemic. Uh, In any party, booze is considered essential for life. If you invite people over, if you don't have this, it's it's essential. It's essential all over the place, but not around the kids. But we but we celebrate with it. We bring it out when when we have good news. Everything is around that clink clink. Uh, here's what Ray says. You tell me if he's lying. They're yelling, screaming, and running around. Of course they are. It's unbearable looking, looking in from the outside. I worked my, one of my first jobs was a toy store manager. And these, these parents aren't paying attention to the kids. The kids are running around. The kids are grabbing things off the shelves. Uh, oftentimes they just left the kids there and I'm the babysitter. They come back hours later. Uh, That was a clever one. But, uh, yeah, I, I can't picture they're going to be right on top of everything in a bar, especially. That's my guess. Uh, person continues. I really don't get why parents do it and expect the rest of the place to be unbothered. Forty-one-year-old uh, Katcha says it's frowned upon where I'm from, and I don't like it here. It makes me feel judged by parents for not having kids. Well, that's a funny angle. Okay, yeah, <laughs> right. She found a way to make it about her. <laughs> what about couples? And you don't have a man? Are you all right? <laughs> Uh, a 32-year-old, James, living in Williams- Williamsburg, recently grabbed a beer with his 18-day-old son, George, and his 33-year-old buddy, Marcus. The trio had a great time. It's not like he's lactating. It's, you know, he's fine. You picture a dude having a beer even though he has a whatever-month-old. Yeah, I really don't think it's that big But of you a can deal. control your situation. You're at home. You're having a beer. You can control that. You can't control other drunk people. We're really acting like these are classy bars. I just keep going back to the fact that it's daytime. It's a separate time. It's 
it sounds like they're catering to parents. They want business from parents that they probably can't get because the parents are too busy and they can't leave their kids alone. So they opened up their space and said, okay, baby's welcome while the parents get a drink. So that brings them more money, gives the parents a chance to be social, have a drink. I mean, if, yeah, if the kids are jumping up on the tables and, you know, playing duck, duck, goose and slapping other people in the head. How aren't yeah. they? How aren't they? But it doesn't like a I don't know. At they weren't. Picture, they weren't when I was at the. <laughs> they're all babies. Looking at this picture, nobody's slapping somebody they're, in the face. No, but they're all no, infants. Had, they're all like babies that have to be held. It doesn't look like there's like toddlers running around. Yeah. Which, I you know, that could be a different story, but that would be a different story if it was like at, at an IHOP, you know? I'm Nothing drinking my happening. beer and everybody's smelling their baby's diapers. That's what people do. They smell their baby's that, diapers for fun. That is what fun. happens. They, they, no, for fun. You add it for fun like a trick. They smell it to check. I see it. This, I'm telling you, we sat there and had a, a, a lovely drink for a time. We distanced ourselves. There were picnic tables across the sidewalk. So when no one was around, we were even able to roll a joint there. There's no, fair to say there's no distancing here? Yeah, no, I'm saying close. I'm saying we distance to across the sidewalk. Yeah, they were. No, no. COVID is a different story. And I'm not. No one in New York gives a shit. So this is us caring. But um, but no, it no kids were doing anything that kids are not supposed to do in places. They're not supposed to do it. That would bother anybody. They were playing with the kids stuff that was there for them. And parents were nicely talking to each other as if you were at some family reunion or some barbecue on a Sunday that you might invite people over to your house. We don't have backyards here. So we invite people to this place and we're not allowed to have barbecues in most of our parks, really mo like 90% or something. It's very difficult. So we invite them to this place and we pretend we're at a barbecue because we live in Brooklyn. I maybe, think that's more the story. Maybe you are at the Ritz. I'm just saying when I look <laughs> into a bar at 12 noon and you see those two or three adults there and you're like, oh, you're trouble. Oh, this was this was a it just seemed like a lovely picnic amongst adults. C could this be the poll? What a hot yeah. topic. Yeah, I think yeah. it is. Yeah. It's just, uh, well, I mean, maybe bars are safer than schools now, it seems. So I guess mm, why not? No, right? no. I, I tell, uh, you know, a cow gets nervous because uh, sometimes her kids skip school and I show her the news and I'm like, good, <laughs> good. Let them skip. Here, here's what people are doing now, because uh, the biggest one, the latest one was uh, Uvalde, Texas. We were, you know, 700 uh, cop cowards let all these kids die. Um, here's here's how they're going to fix that instead of training cops better. They're going to add uh, automatic locking doors, some of these schools. But uh, they're already in. What do you mean? I, yeah, who's it to lock for? Yeah, I don't. where's the lock? In then the out. gunman's locked inside. Right. Yeah, this is for the sense. cops. Right. And then they're going to uh, announce requirements for students to carry clear or mesh backpacks that would make it difficult to hide weapons. This is so stupid. As if that's or we could just ban assault rifles, but no one wants to sure. do that. Right. That sounds like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have rights. I, I kind of brought this up on um, the Black Eye Who Tips. They there are they always cause trouble outside these shooters. Then they make their way inside. It has nothing to do with they they hid it in a bag and got into science class and then took their gun out. They always come waving that gun. And they get right through because they have they have better stuff than the uh, security guard who didn't security guard who didn't expect anything. For the most and, part, and, I, I, and the plastic bag. Sorry, but a plastic bag. I, now you have. I see your tampons. I see whatever you can be em embarrassed about being a kid. Yeah, at that age. Yeah. Yeah, and also at any people. That's that's your private belongings. Whatever it is that that you have in there. Whatever book you're reading could be embarrassing to you. Who cares? I don't want to think about it. Mind your business. Right. But I think like. Uh, <laughs> No, it mostly doesn't happen like that video for Jeremy by Pearl Jam. Right. Like the strolling up and I got this gun in here and let me pause for a second, reach in my pants and now I'm shooting myself. Like it's do they think that's a documentary? Right. Don't Did watch that video if you are triggered by these things. Did you see uh on the set of Law and Order of all shows, Law and Order Organized Crime, there was a shooting. There's a real shooting. A crew member got shot. 
Uh, the uh, information still coming in, but a crew member on the NBC series told Deadline that okay, Deadline <laughs> that he saw a man with quote something under his shirt running away from the scene. Also, it appears that the vehicle, uh, the vehicle, uh, the victim was sitting in had an orange parking cone on its roof at the time. For what that? Let me worth. guess. Ice T was like, "Let me get this straight. You're telling me somebody got shot." Yes, yes, I see. You don't have to explain everything to the audience. When the, and the, these shows, they they're always ripped from the headlines. So are they gonna go on a movie set in the show and there's a killing, and then but the actors are people that look like them. It's meta, like Ocean's Twelve, when Julia Roberts ran into Julia Roberts. I don't like meta right now. Right? <laughs> they're debating about it. We mentioned this website some time ago. It's rentahitman.com. Ooh, I know someone to call for. Well, here's the thing. I'm glad I'm warning <laughs> <Not> you. you. <laughs> it's, uh, it's fake, of course. Uh, but if you do give enough information, the guy will send your information to the FBI. And here's another one of those stories. Wow. A New Orleans woman named Zandra Ellis is accused of reaching, accused, she did it, is accused of reaching out to the website rent-a-hitman.com, asking for them. Oh, my God, you need to put the dashes? That's like waiting two <laughs> weeks for a gun. Right. It, it, it's intent when you add dashes. Uh, you thought ask, about that. Yeah. Asking for them to kill her love rival. Ellis and her potential victim have children with the same man. Oh. Well, then it makes sense. The website <laughs> reported Ellis to the FBI. An undercover agent named himself Ace, just to make it more ridiculous, <laughs> met with the, subject, the suspect at a Waffle House <laughs> and agreed on a fee of $1,000 for the hit. I'll give you some more detail on that. Ellis was arrested shortly afterwards, charged with attempted murder for hire, could spend 10 years in prison, if found guilty. According to the operator of rentahitman.com, the website has prevented uh, murders in the past. The woman, Zandra, 33 years old, uh, she made the contract using a fake name, Jasmine Brown. In her inquiry, Ellis said that she wanted a woman identified only as BH to be dead. Ellis said, I would like her dead since she is trying to kill me. First of all, Jasmine sounds like a stripper name. Mm -hmm. And... A Waffle House? You might as well make it a fancy name. You know, it sounds like entrapment. Name. Like the, the site is specifically for the FBI, right? It seems it, yeah. yeah. You so know she could argue they're part? entrapping her. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so ridiculous that, of course, I knew when I was being overly ridiculous, of I was course. tricking them. Well, it right. seems she Whose didn't go that angle. Whose name is Jasmine? That's, That's crazy. That's an easy case for yeah. a defense lawyer. That's a dream case. <laughs> well, she didn't know that. The operator of the website, Robert Innes, said that he contacted Ellis 24 hours later to see if she wanted to go through with the hit. Ellis responded in within a minute. Uh, the worst part is we know if we meet the dude, he's not worth it. Uh, <laughs> I promise you it's better without him. Oh. She gave, she gave, he gave her a, a longer waiting period than you do getting an AR-15. Actually, that was really that was really cool because I do feel like people get really heated about these things and you're suddenly having thoughts. I don't know. I've gone on that site for Keith and then I'm like, thank God they gave me the two <laughs> week, two week waiting period. Allegedly. <laughs> Ennis, a graduate uh, of the Napa Valley Police Academy, started the website in 2005. Let's see here. Oh, by the way, if you look at the website right now, you'll see that they ask for, they say cookies are necessary on this site. You know, some sites do that. Is this a trick for, to try to get me? Are you trying to spin me right around? What is this? Every Well, the website says everyone should know by now that the dark and deep webs are not a safe place to shop for your nefarious deeds. Where there is lots a good place? There are lots of potentially dangerous sites rife with viruses and fraud runs rampant there. Your privacy is not guaranteed and your information could be leaked to thousands of less than stellar sites, including law enforcement. And that's no fun. We are safe and secure and we're right here on the World Wide Web. And then it pops up. Cookies are necessary for you to continue. <laughs> OK, uh, your information is important to us and your privacy is important to us. In order for us to maintain 100 percent compliance with HIPAA, Laws, which stands for Hitman Information Privacy and Protection Act of 1964. <laughs> we must use cookies. 
By continuing to use the site, you accept uh, the use of cookies. Since 1920, Rena Hitman has assisted satisfied clients from all walks of life, ranging from regular citizens, children and adults, <laughs> to government employees and even political figures. <laughs> okay. Since 1920, they've had this website? The, the, <laughs> <laughs> Rent, <laughs> oh, fuck. That's a good point. Rent a Hitman has seen it all. And know how to precisely handle your delicate situation in a timely manner. Privacy, because of the HIPAA law, is guaranteed. Let's face it. We've all had a relationship or two that you just wish would go away, but didn't know just how to end it. Look no further th than to let Rent-A-Hitman take care of the dirty work for you. It's easier than having a difficult conversation with someone. <laughs> By the way, the guy in charge of the website, you know, the fake name, Guido. You're going to be hiring Guido, if you're curious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's some uh, customer testimonials. Guido and his public relations crew at Rena Hitman were able to resolve a five-year dispute in a matter of days. Highly recommended. Caught my husband cheating with the babysitter, and our relationship was terminated after a free public relations consultation. I'm single again and looking to mingle. Thanks, Guido. <laughs> my business schedule is too busy to get my hands dirty with human resources issues. So I consulted with Rena Hitman, and they handled my disgruntled employee issue promptly while I was out on vacation. Gracias, Rena Hitman. If your father had the sense of humor that he thinks he had and the wit yeah. that he thinks he can produce from himself, this would be a funny sight by him. Yeah, and people would have donated like they do to this guy, and I would have had boots that don't require plastic bags in them to... Uh... You stay so, dry. You're so traumatized by that. Well, it's, uh, it might affect you. Uh, they also <laughs> have special discounts for groups of three or more, senior citizens 65 or over, spring cleaning mm. and graduation packages available also. What does that mean? Oh, they I'm kill clean. everybody, the graduates and stuff? <laughs> Inquire within. Okay. Ellis met with an undercover FBI agent posing as a hitman with the name Ace at, the, at a Waffle House. Doc, uh, documents in Ellis's case say the website is linked to FBI's Internal Criminal Complaint Center. When Ennis did a background check on Ellis and discovered her real name, he said, why are you using a fake name? And she said, I didn't want a real name just in case it comes back to haunt me, so I don't want to go to jail. I just, I just so didn't want to fall sad. back on me, so I used a fake name. But you asked this, me, and now I told you. This isn't sad. Ennis reported Ellis to the, uh, to the FBI. According to documents, there was a brief haggle between Ellis and Ace, Ace who works for the FBI, via text message over the price for the hit. Eventually, they settled on $1,000. This is a lifetime TV movie reject. This is a rejection <laughs> that, is that some writer wrote in. watch with me. Right. On the Lifetime <laughs> channel. But, you know, you don't want to ruin it if she doesn't have $1,000. So she only had to pay $100 up front. Yeah, this is a well, great deposit. story. Okay. From there, Ellis said that she would pay the hitman $250 in installments until the debt was paid off. Okay. When the pair met up at the Waffle House, Ellis brought her child in a, in a stroller. Better than a bar. I guess. Drinking's not so bad anymore, is it? Know. During the meetup, Ellis uh, explained that she wanted BH dead because she believed BH was trying to kill her. Let's see. The pair also agreed on a code word that would be used to confirm that the kill had taken place. So a lot of this proves the intent. <laughs> when Ace asked Ellis uh, if she had a weapon to protect herself, Ellis glanced at her backpack and told the undercover agent, when you see me with this, I'm always strapped. When Ellis exited the Waffle House, she was arrested and found in possession of a Ruger 308 pistol containing live rounds. May I suggest something that might be a little too woo-woo and also an extra step? Sure. So he got the, you know, the consultation was had. And then two weeks later, he asked her, are you sure? Which is kind of like, hey, did you have some time to cool off? Right. What about a third step, a third call that said, hey, that person's dead. You gauge the response, decide if they're going into like, you know, some mental health procedures or to jail because you laughed when I told you that. Or maybe laughter goes to the other. I'm not going to be the one to decide, but you. When you, had a gu when you had a gun in your backpack, that's something. Mm. When you had a loaded gun in your backpack, that's something. Ellis is charged with use of interstate commerce facilities and a commission to for murder for hire. She could face 10 years. So because the website was based in a different state, that that's a big uh, crime as well. 
Oh, re- wow. Mm. <laughs> There's like multiple layers. <laughs> of. <laughs> Look up your criminal behavior. I saw something Something on the site was like, our service is not available in Vermont, Puerto Rico, and Guam. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sorry, we're not allowed to work in there. It Vermont. has to be where there's a Waffle House. <laughs> Ellis is charged with the use of interstate blah, blah, blah. Speaking to the Daily Beast about Ellis's arrest, Robert Innes said, when a life is in jeopardy, I want the case to get into capable hands. Fortunately, a life was saved in this process. He says, I get requests every single day. No. Despite the no. attention in the news media, podcast, online videos, people still see this as a place where they can attempt to hire a hitman. It's mind boggling. I just don't get it. People are just stupid, he says. I have a fucked up app. What's that? <laughs> fucked up app. Yeah, because every day there's a mass shooting and every day somebody is looking to hire a hitman. Right. This is not, I mean, Cupid would have something to say about this, but not me. I have no opinion on it, in fact. In the Rolling Stone interview, Ennis said that the first serious inquiry he got came around 2010. When a woman from the UK named Helen said that she wanted members of her family killed because she had been left out of an inheritance. Oh, my God. But then what? (laughs) Then you get the money or just everybody's dead? It's just good to know they can't spend it. (laughs) Helen was living in Canada at the time. And it said that he had he contacted authorities who contacted the relevant police who in turn performed a welfare check on the suspect. Turned out Helen was wanted in the UK for outstanding warrants. It doesn't say what. She was she was extradited shortly after making contact with the website. Well, I wonder why she wasn't on the list of people who are going to inherit this money. <laughs> if not, I'll kill you. Well, <laughs> I don't like you anymore and I'm not dead yet. So should have saved that for later. Oh, Helen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is something. That would is... you what's a, what's an appropriate reason to ever hire a hitman? <laughs> like, what would you hire a hitman over? See, oh, I yeah, don't know. Is... Be- Craig in space. Are My we friend recording? hates space. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it. I, I want bad people to be alive so I see bad things happening to them. Like they usually do it that's themselves. That's healthy. That's healthy. Mm. That, that beats murder, right? Yeah, that's true. It's, yeah, it's, it's like, a spectrum. If, if you offended me, you're probably a big asshole. And so you're going to offend other people and really pay the price. Okay. And I, and hopefully the word will get back to me and please me. It's like a weird version of karma. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's uh yes, it's a bad karma that you're enjoying. Is it, it the, whole, the whole explanation is off like maybe what's karma backwards? Right. Amrock. So that's Amrock. I enjoy Amrock a lot. Yeah. <laughs> when that happens, that's good. Uh when uh, when um we have a guest on we, we have them fill out a little a little piece of paper that says... Uh, a piece of paper on the internet, yes. A piece of paper on the internet. I print it out, so it's a piece of paper for me. I see, okay. And they it's fill a, you know, out your printer. What are you promoting? This kind of thing. She, For example, she's going to be doing a military tour in Italy and Turkey. So uh, when, when is that, by the way? Uh, that's next week. The okay, week so after s- next. Well, I don't know if you'll be able to get basic training and done, guys, but <laughs> sign up now. And uh, see what can be done, okay? Wow, I'm how long so are you going to be away? That's so exciting. The tour I'm asking itself. you because he needs to put it on the calendar. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're helping him out. The tour is just 10 days, but I'm going to stay wow. a little longer because um, Carmen Lynch, is, who's my BFF, is going to be on the tour with me. So we're going to stay extra. Uh, we're going to stay in Venice for a couple days and then Rome. Um, Mike Vecchione is also going to be there um, and Louis Katz. So everybody's staying a little bit later. Um, I think the guys are having their girlfriends come visit and Carmen and I are just going to probably make really stupid videos. Like when we go to Venice, I was like, I have to buy blue spandex tights so that I could do the like a virgin video. Remember when Madonna did that video? Everybody remembers. Oh, my God. So I remember like 10 year old me was like, oh, my God, she looks amazing. I love these blue tights. So I told Carmen, I'm like, we have to do a like a virgin video. So like learn so the excited. choreography and everything, right? Yeah, she's Carmen thinks I'm going to like tip the boat over when she's recording or something because I'm really going to I'm going to be committed. I'm going to be committed. I'm going to do this whole thing. Some people think uh, I'll see uh, the gondola. I'll uh, try out the pasta. <laughs> like I'm going to recreate a Madonna <laughs> video. No, I've uh, I've never been to Italy we are first we're flying to Turkey 
Um, I don't know the names of the bases and we're not like for security purposes. We're not allowed to say them anyway. But if there's any active duty Keith and the Girl listeners that might be in Turkey, Italy, we're going to be in Aviano. That much I can say. That's the city. Um, try to come see us. All right. I don't know. Or, Why or, you, or write what? me. Can you imagine you're in the military, you're over <laughs> there, things are pretty strict, you know, you're you're half always on duty, and then they're like, here's a free comedy show. Nah. I'm not in the mood for humors. Now, tonight. we have so much fun. I mean, I've done a bunch of these tours, and, and the military is a really a great audience, and it's a mix. It's a mix of um of everyone. So sometimes you have, like, the paralegals in the military. It's not always just people in, you know, active duty soldier gear. It's it's a lot of fun. What kind of it's jokes of do fun. they tend to really appreciate? Everything. It's just like doing a show here. The only thing is in our contract, we're not allowed to make fun of whoever the current president is, uh, mm-hmm. which is was really difficult because most of my tours were done during the Trump years. So that was <laughs> um, you can't make fun of the president and you can't make jokes about rape which I was like, oh, well, there goes my whole set. Um, but apparently, at least, you know, it's some, some time ago, maybe still now, it was a huge problem in the military. So um, whenever I tell the comics that I go on tour with that, they, they all kind of laugh because, like, who has rape jokes, you know? But I guess it is a thing, and they don't want us to talk about it. So they, they prefer that you're not super edgy. Um, you can... You can be blue like you can curse and stuff it, it just depends on the base that you're at but 90 percent of the time they've been fantastic and so fun do you have keith material and are you bringing it to the bases oh you know it all right you know it she does she <laughs> does i'm dating a recovering alcoholic which is great but i kind of wish i knew him when he was fun that always gets a good laugh out there out there <laughs> uh but also when you filled out this uh the information you said uh, you wrote, I'm considering doing past life regression <laughs> hypnosis because I like to burn money. Is, is this true? I forgot it. <laughs> so, yeah, I I must have filled that out a couple months ago. Um, I full disclosure was vaping and it's hard. <laughs> and I was thinking of doing um, to quit nicotine uh, of doing um acupuncture acupressure and then somebody told me about this um what is it called hypnosis past past life regression no i was gonna use hypnosis to quit the nicotine and then as i was scrolling i found they have past life regression hypnosis and i was like that would be so cool and i watched a youtube video of some woman who like started speaking another language that she didn't even know she spoke and she was really afraid of water so she went in to kind of like learn how to not be afraid of, of, of swimming. And it turns out she told her hypnotist that she, it, it looks like she drowned in like the 17th century. Mm. Someone drowned her or waterboarded her. Mm. I don't know. Just fascinating. I know Keith is constantly making fun of these types of things, but. I'm going to find her and kill, <laughs> hire a hitman.com. Is, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I don't think I'm going to do it. It's. Um, it's like 250 bucks and I just I, I don't have that to spare right now because I also just got laid off. Fun fact. Um, the gym club of the gym. Yeah, I'm going to pretty much just do comedy full time, I think. And, um, you know, maybe mooch off Keith and be like, hey, can you just grab me some dinner? I'll pay back later and then I'll never pay him back. So, so. maybe not no past life regression sessions anytime. soon. by the way, when you get to she loves all this hippie shit. And <laughs> like today you get a massage. Yeah. Right. Then you're running late and you're you're grabbing your clothes, you're sweating. <laughs> Doesn't that ruin the massage? No, because it it uh, okay. I I had a, a lot of muscle pain, so she really it was a deep tissue and she broke up some of the tension. Okay. So it did Sounds I get relaxing. re-stressed again? Yeah, I did get re. I don't get massages for relaxation. I usually get more pause? sports stuff like sports massage because instead of taking an Advil, you can actually have. Um, you know, someone sort of dig in sure. and just move the blood around. It really does work. And that's not hippie shit. That's like it's science. Not, it's science. And Advil's 50 cents, though. Yeah, but massage, a lot of insurance companies are now looking at it like it's not a luxury. And a lot of some, not a lot, some insurance companies are including that as an actual service that you can build to insurance. Have you tried to quit vaping 
before you looked into if you're a queen in a past life? Uh, I did one session of acupuncture. Didn't work. Okay. <laughs> okay. Did you did you try uh, uh, earwax candles? No, okay. but maybe I will. This is what I'm hearing. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. You're so judgmental. It just makes me nervous. That's all. Oh, you it's know. It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry. The kids will be out. We're gonna have to buy a house someday. Yeah. You know. Well, maybe we'll just live here, and I'll just do past life regression right here on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's tough. This, but this this woman found out she did. She is she better now? I guess the woman that found out I, she drowned I don't in know. a past life. She, but at least she oh. knows why she was afraid of the water. She was like a princess in the 1700s, and someone tried are. to kill her, they and they tried are. they drowned her, and so she brought that with her. Would you be bummed out if you're like just a civilian? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be tough, right? Yeah. I yeah, feel but like I for a hundred ninety nine dollars more, they can find a year where it works. Yeah, out. yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they get they have the princess package, the queen package. I know it's I know it's stupid, and that's why it, my, I came to my senses and decided that I'm not going to do it. Okay. But it just kind of seemed like a fun, like, hey, if you got 250 bucks to burn, like, this sounds like a fun, like, let's just see what happens. It's like I went to a medium once, fully being aware that I was probably going to waste my money. Um, I actually went with Carmen about five years, six years ago, and it was this guy in Long Island. He was considered one of the best. And the took Long like, Island media. Long Island. It took six months to get an appointment with him. Of course. And, and I'm he, did, the he did say a few things that were like, hmm. And he couldn't have Googled it. He couldn't have, you know, uh -huh. but it was it, it was took interesting. You a long time to <laughs> get <laughs> here. He's like the <laughs> L.I.R. was very hot. Something ridiculous. Am I close? <laughs> <laughs> You're wondering. Does it make sense to get on an L.I. double R and then pay me money? Am I getting know, close? How did she know how I got here? <laughs> That's crazy. Actually, I called the medium up ahead of time and I'm like, uh, tell her the initials. K.M. story. This is before I really knew you. Yeah. And now, you what did me. what were they like? What did you feel they kind of got close on or what he, did they get? He said um, he said something about uh we I, I wanted to see like if my mom would show up and <laughs> Carmen made a joke that she said she's like what if what if abortion show up what if they show up the <gasps> <like this?" laughs> like, anything dead could I come mean, right but uh she's um, so funny you son of a bitch <laughs> apparent the guy had said that um he he wasn't seeing my mom right it, maybe she was mad at me or something I don't know um, but he's, he mentioned my uncle by and name. And you had one. No, but he said he's. What was the name by he, name? What was the it, name? It, it, he said, wait a second. He said, uh, Jimmy, he said, it's, it's the oldest brother on your father's side. And he's, uh, he's very, he's, he's standing right next to your grandmother. And, and you had a grandmother. And it was, no, it was just because in the family, everybody knew that that was my grandmother's favorite son. Okay. So it was just interesting. But whatever. I know you guys are like, this well, is all bullshit. And I totally get skepticism. How can I say it's bullshit? I totally get skepticism. I get it. And I'm not trying get, to convince anybody. Why would you get... Was... He said Jimmy out of the blue. That's amazing, right? Yes, it is. I don't think it happened, but isn't that amazing? It's amazing. <laughs> and then I asked questions about, like, the future. I was like, I'm worried. My kids were really little at the time. And and I said, um, are they going to be, like, okay? He goes, eh, don't worry. It's it's you, you got professionals on your hands. Like, they're all going to be professionals. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, that's enough for me. Not very deep, but did okay. It, I know did, you're laughing at me right now. Did it give you any peace? <laughs> no, because it's been hell the last couple of the teenage years suck. At least knowing, okay, they maybe they're not going to be annoying and they'll eventually be independent. Okay, great. But no, they're annoying now. No, I mean, when you left, when you left learning about your Uncle Jimmy, did you feel good? <laughs> like, oh, that's good. I felt like I, I felt fine. I felt like the same way when I came in. I'm like, he was, uh, he was surprisingly um, knowledgeable about my life, which I didn't, I thought it would all be general. He was surprisingly specific. He had a lot more specifics than I went in thinking he would have. Such um, as? Such as? Such as uh, just specific things about my my dad's side of the family. My dad um, said a couple said something about my mom 
about her temper, which she did have a really big temper. Um, why don't you go more? Why don't I go more? Because it was just a one. No, it was just a one time thing. I was just curious. I just I've it didn't change my life. It's not like I'm a huge believer, but I just thought, let me go and let me just see what happens if he's the best. So it's not like it really changed my life. One to ten. How real is it? I think a five. I think it could be. I think it could be. I think there's real people out there that are that have a real connection. And I think that you can learn to kind of be more intuitive um, I don't think this guy was a scam, but I also don't think that I'm going to take a medium's advice and like base my life around it. It was for me, it was more for entertainment. Like, let me just see if this guy knows anything. I'm just curious because everyone in my life that was important to me is dead. So I was like, let me see if uh, I get anything out of it. And it was like a grain of salt. I take it like a grain of salt. It didn't but a really five though. Because in general, him, I would give him an eight. But I think in oh, general, <laughs> I think in general, the medium stuff, it, it's 50 50. You could find some great person oh. who's really intuitive and you can find a, a ridiculous palm reader who just wants 10 bucks on West 4th Street. I think it really runs the gamut. Is it like going to the right church? Like, um, I don't I'm trying know. to see the comparison. I don't know. I don't know enough. For me, like I said, it was it was enough for me to go because I just I went in having zero expectations mm. and I came out like pleasantly surprised, but also not ready to, you know, say that, oh, this is it. Everybody go see a medium like because I know a lot of it's bullshit. But I think that there are some people that are really connected and I think that some of it is not bullshit. Do you watch so. the TV people? No, no, no. How do you know they'd be bad? I don't know. Wait, don't you mean, know. do you mean connected to the dead? I just want to make sure I'm not. Making yeah, that. I think there are people that can that can really connect to that. I really do. And connect to whatever is intuitive. All right. Let's go. I'll go with you. Let's go. All right. Yeah. Would you do it? Are you going to pay for it? Yeah, I'll pay for it. All right, fine. OK. Do Let's you go. have a medium like that? That is good. I don't, or... I don't know. No, I don't. Ha- like, that's the thing. I don't have. I'm not like, you know. A Sylvia Brown person. I don't, you know, this was just a that one is, so time. That's, you, that's a TV person. Yeah. Mm. No, I, I'm not so, I think there's a lot of desperate people that hang on. Like, oh, I, I want to hear everything they have to say. And I think it's interesting. I think it's entertainment. I think if you can get something out of it and maybe get a few goosebumps from what someone says, I think that's cool. Is that dude but, still around in Long Island? I could look them up. I'd have to go back to my email from years ago, but we could try. Okay. As a field trip, as like a Keith and the girl field trip. Yeah. So Keith could come back and be like, it's all bullshit. I mean, if if he brought out Jimmy out of nowhere, that's something. He brought out Uncle Uncle Jimmy. See? Well, I can't argue with that. All right. Well, there you go. All right. I got to get out of here. I got to find out (laughs) some secrets. Uh, So here's what you want to do. You want to download the podcast. Shut up. Mommy's talking. Yes, please. I produce it and I do a great job. He does an okay job. Thank you very much. Can I just interrupt? Because Mm -hmm. um, we have had some amazing last few episodes and I'm really proud of them. Um, Karen interrupts a lot, but I handle it. really, (laughs) And so do I. Um, we're not as like smooth as Keith and Kenda who've been doing this for close to 20 years. So we're definitely not on their level, but we have our own little style and we're learning about podcasting and I love our guests. We have a dad of the month this (laughs) week. We're recording with some addiction specialist, so I'm sure he'll be really funny, Um, (laughs) but it's so much fun. So I, if you guys don't mind and you can not interrupt your Keith and the girl schedule, it would mean a lot if you could please listen to my podcast. Thank you. All right. There you have it. Uh, KeithandTheGirl.com slash forums. Make sure you say hi. Maybe you had a uh, had an experience like uh, Kai was saying. I'd love to hear about it. No, that's, it's a trap. Don't do it. I, I know I'm that. never going to hear the end of this now. The, for the rest of our relationship, he'll be like, I don't know. Why don't you ask the guy in Long Island? Like, I really just set myself up. Fuck. Kai's like, please just leave the seat up or something regular. Like, this is just... <laughs> How do I explain this to my friends? You are just... <laughs> and thank you everybody who's uh, sharing the show we appreciate it a lot that's a big deal that's what keeps us going and we'll talk to you soon